Hi guys, Mac here again. Very quick video for you this evening. This is just a follow-up to the video I did on the Dell XPS 9300, the 13-inch one that I picked up earlier in the year. So this is a unit with a quad-core i7 in it, the 10th gen. It's got 16 gig of RAM in it and I think half a terabyte of SSD storage. And somebody recently asked me about the performance with regards to things like virtualization. So what I thought we'd do is we'll go and have a look at a couple of Windows 10 machines and also that I think there's a server on this machine as well. I've also got the Intel power gadget on the right here so you can actually see the impact on the temperatures and all that stuff. Now one thing I will point out is I'm not actually on the native machine, I've actually connected over RDP. But anyway, let's get some virtual machines fired up. So I'm going to fire up my Hyper-V here. I've got two Windows 10 machines set up and a server. So let's have a quick look at the settings of one of them. So you'll see that I haven't changed a lot of the settings that much. This machine has 4 gig of RAM allocated, but I'm also using dynamic memory. And I've also got two virtual processor cores allocated. So let's get this one fired up and we'll see what the performance is like. There we go, let's get logged into it. And there is our Windows 10 machine. Now you've just seen from the configuration that it should have two cores in it. Let's have a look. There we go, you can see our two virtual cores there over one socket and if we have a look at the memory You'll see that it's currently got 4 gig allocated. The maximum mem memory you're seeing there, by the way, is because of the dynamic memory allocation that I've got set up in Hyper-V. So let's have a look at the actual general performance of the machine. This, this unit has Office on it, so let's get things like Excel powered up. There we go. We'll do Word. We've also got PowerPoint there and Visio there on the end. Now I think you'll agree that performance is actually really good and I'll be honest and say I was a little bit surprised as to how good it is. It's far more usable than I was expecting so let's get those shut down. The other thing I've run into a couple of times is problems with networking on Hyper-V so let's go and test that. I'm just going to do a, a quick network speed test on the host itself. That's here. This should be running over gigabit ethernet. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is also run the same test, but from within the virtual machine. Now, the switch that's set up in Hyper-V here is directly connected to the network. It's not using the NAT one, which it does by default, but let's do a comparison. There we go. As you can see, the performance is very comparable, and I'm quite pleased about that. It's interesting if you jump over here and have a look at the temperatures as well. They do seem to be somewhat all over the place. The fans on the unit are really quiet, however. If you get close to it, you can hear them running. So what about running multiple virtual machines? Well, we can do that as well because we've got this second machine set up. Let's quickly check the settings. I'm pretty sure it should be the same. Yeah, there we go. Dynamic memory setup and two cores. So let's also fire up that machine as well. get logged in and there's our second machine now of course in this one we can also fire up office it is interesting like I say looking at the temperatures and also the utilization and of course the frequency because I'm not really seeing any throttling from what I can see that doesn't mean that it's running cool, because it absolutely isn't. I mean, you can look at the temperatures. They are fluctuating up to 100 degrees there, even with the actual utilization not being that high. So if we have a look at Task Manager on the local machine, for example, yeah, you'll see the CPU is not massively utilized at the moment. But even so, the performance within that second virtual machine is still pretty excellent. I've just hit all of those Office apps there all at the same time. And of course, we can do the same on the other one as well.
So I think you can see the performance on multiple virtual machines is pretty excellent. And like I say, I'm a little bit surprised as to how good it actually is. So let's get back into the Hyper-V Manager. And let's also fire up this server 2019. Here we go, let's get signed into this one as well. And there you go, we now have three virtual machines running and you can see the impact on the temperature and also the utilization on the right side there within the Intel Power Gadget. Let's have a look at the local task manager. You'll see now the memory is under quite a bit of pressure, which is what you'd expect, but dynamic memory can deal with a lot of that. CPU itself isn't that stressed at this point. So I think you can see that it does run multiple virtual machines very well. And like I say, I'm a little bit surprised as to how well it does that. I've been looking for a replacement for my MacBook Pro because obviously Apple's now going the ARM route. And of course, I think that's going to cause me a problem with what I actually do in my day job, which does tend to involve a lot of virtualization. The performance of this 13-inch XPS is making me feel better about the potential of the 15-inch and the 17-inch. And hopefully I should have one of the 17-inch units arriving soon, so I should be able to test that a little bit more thoroughly. Anyway, let's get these machines shut down. Anyway, I told you it's going to be a quick and easy video. It was in response to somebody specifically asking me the question. But uh, any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And I'll try and get back to you about them as soon as I can.